Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I am so excited to be back to doing these. I didn't realize how much I miss them. And it's because every time I do them, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Every time I do them, I am reminding myself, and I'm a big fan of uh, Walk the Talk, and so every time I do one of these, I talk to myself. I talk to myself. It's always fun. It's always fun. So I want to chat with you on this awesome Tuesday morning about the how to cut ties with negative people. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. I've been in direct sales for like a million and three years and everyone always says up level your circle and you're like the five most, the people you surround yourself with the most. And if there's negative people in your life, you need to get rid of them. It's good in theory, but how in the world do you actually do it? How do you tell your mama who says that your dream is never going to happen Peace out. How do you get rid of that negative Nancy friend that you were BFFs way back, but now you know you've you've grown yourself and you're growing your business and she needs to go. Like, how do you do that? Heck, how do you do that with teammates? Teammates who are stuck where they were a year ago and are not growing through or sideline for friends or sisters or what Whatever it is, how in the world do you actually do the cutting of the ties? Because it is great to talk about. It is not easy to actually do. Anybody feel me here? Everybody feel me here? Like, you know, you're supposed to. But how? All right. You want the how? First things first is you have to be secure in yourself. Sister, you got to know in your soul who you are. You got to know that cutting ties is the right thing to do. You have to know beyond knowing, beyond knowing, beyond knowing, beyond anything anyone else can say that you need desperately. Hang on, I forgot something to cut those ties you know you need to do it and you know in your spirit in your heart in your gut in your mind in all the parts of you that this is okay that this is good for you because this negative person nine times out of ten is gonna be a narcissist if you don't know what a narcissist is, they're the type of people who can take any situation and flip it and make it about them. You got some of them in your life. Maybe some of y'all are them. I don't know. I'm not going to say anything like that. But the first thing you have to do is be solid in your knowledge that this right here, this cutting of ties is right. This right here is what you need to do no matter who it is. And if you don't have that kind of solid, hmm, start there. Don't do anything else until you get that solid in you. Until you can look that family member, that former BFF in the face and say, I'm doing what's best for me. As women, we were trained before we got here, we were trained to do what's best for everyone else. And if we do what's best for us, we are selfish. We're not. And I know that's easy to say and hard to fight. I'm, I'm fighting it every day. I fight it every single dog on day of fighting the feeling of being selfish for taking the time for me, for doing what is best for me, for cutting ties. I'm in the middle of cutting ties with people who are not good for me. I need you. Oh, look, I got excited on that one. I'm getting excited over here. I'm going to draw my eyebrows like Sharpies. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome, baby. Um, I need you to trust yourself that you're all right to do what's good for you, even if that means letting go of relationships that aren't there for you. Right? So the first thing you have to do is you need to truly assess 
And that means look at, see, check out, really sit down with yourself and say, girl, is this relationship actually working for me? And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a secret. I'm going to give you a secret. If you have to ask that question, the answer is no. <laughs> That's the secret here. If you have to ask yourself, is this person helping me out or hindering me? The answer is they hindering you. Always. Always, 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 always hindering you. They are a problem for you. If you're having to sit with yourself and say, Erica, is this person doing you any good? No. Answer is always no. Nah. Mm -mm. That ain't good. That ain't good. All right? So, yeah. Accept that. Accept that though they may have been your best friend in high school, you're not the same woman you were in high school. I hope not. If you're still the same woman you were in high school, and I graduated high school a lot of years ago, 2004. Somebody do that math for me. How long ago did I graduate high school? If I am still the same Erica that graduated high school, I got bigger problems. All right. All right. I got bigger problems than bad friends. And accept that you grow and you change and you don't want to be the same person you were in high school, the same person you were in college, the same person you were when you worked that dead end job, right? You don't want to be that same person. You want to grow. You want to change. You want to up level yourself, right? So now let's talk about some scenarios. Let's talk about some scenarios. Let's talk about your old best friend. Old best friend. You were thick as thieves. You were everywhere. She spent every night at your house. And the nights that you weren't at your house, you were at her house. And y'all talked about every boy in the magazines. And you drooled over a few of them. But now here you are slaying a business. And she's over there. Shh, it's okay. It's okay. Still in your hometown. Still complaining about hometown gossip. Still looking at you like you got three heads because um, how are you actually making money doing this? Like nobody makes money in those gifts. Like no, they're they're pyramid schemes. What do you do? Well, you have a couple of options. You just stop responding. Silence is an answer. We women, oh, and I'm talking to myself here. Come on, Erica. We have to fill every single moment with some noise. <coughs> you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Silence is uncomfortable for us, isn't it? Uh huh, yeah, it is. We don't like silence. But listen here silence is an answer. Your silence, your lack of response to the last petty thing that she said, your lack of response to the gossip that she's telling you, um, that's the answer. And if you continue that silence, it's going to bring up the opportunity to have an adult conversation. Because some folks... You can look them in the eye and say, girl, you are bad for me. You are negative for me. If you don't change, our relationship is done. And I'm strong enough. I can do that kind of thing. But most people are not like me. And that's okay. You don't want to be like me. It's a hard life sometimes. But that silence is going to lead her to be like, girl, are we okay? Because you've done it. She's done it. We've, we've all been there. You're, she's going to ask, girl, are you okay? And your opportunity arises to say, no, we're not okay. I am working on growing and up-leveling and making more money and making my dreams come true. And you are consistently negative and I'm not okay with that. I would like for you either to A, change your negative ways or B, take some time off from talking to me until you grow. And I'm not saying grow up. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying grow internally. Because if she's negative on the outside, she's even more negative on the inside. And that is okay. We have to love people where they are, not where we want them to be. And that's okay. I'm not saying you got to hate your friend because she's stuck in the negative. No. 
No, but it is also not your responsibility to grow her. You got a full-time job growing you. Trust me, it's full-time. You got a full-time job growing you. You don't need the responsibility of making someone else grow. So start with silence. Silence talks. Then when the opportunity arises, don't you don't have to force it. You can just allow it. When she says, hey, what's up? I ain't heard from you in a while. You get the opportunity to speak your truth, which is you're negative. I'm growing. You need to fix it or we need some time out. And it's okay. Now, this same scenario is absolutely true for your mama. I love my mother. She is my biggest fan all my life. But I had to set some boundaries with my mother. Now, y'all know I'm strong and I have absolutely no problem telling anybody anything. I ain't got no problem with this. So I understand if you're uncomfortable with some of the ways that I do things. But this is from me. This is from me. This is how I do things. And I encourage you to find that strength in yourself because she's in there. Because setting boundaries is not being cruel, it's not being mean, it's not being hateful, none of that stuff. Setting boundaries is protecting you. And so I, a few years ago, had to have a conversation with my mama saying, Mom, I love you, but we're not allowed to talk about my business if you can only say negative things about my business. We can talk about a lot of other stuff. There's plenty of other stuff to talk about in the world. But if only negative things are coming from you about my business, we're not going to talk about my business. She didn't respond for a little bit. This was on the phone. This was a phone call. This wasn't a text message. These things don't need to be in, in messages, y'all. This needs to be a phone call, voice message kind of thing so that they can hear your inflection and hear your request. And she said, okay. Now, my mother's known me longer than anybody, okay? And I think she knows that once I say something, that's it. That's what we do in here. And from that day forward, Boundary set, and that was it. And that was it. Now, my dad was not the same. Some people don't respect those boundaries. However, I stood strong. I stood firm. I set my boundary, and that was that. There wasn't no going back. Anytime he brought it up, I changed the subject. Anytime he brought it up again, I looked at him and said, We're not talking about that. I am strong in my boundaries and I am firm on what I said is what's going to happen. You know, think about it with your children. When you expect your children to do something, you said it, they do it kind of thing. This is how it goes with those boundaries. And so with your parents, with your guardians, with your authority figures, be, be strong in yourself. Be grounded in who you are now, not the child they knew years ago. And say something. You can say whatever comes to your heart, but let it come through your heart, okay? Don't be mean about it. All you have to say is negative things about my business, and until there's something else to say about it, we're not going to discuss it. Very simple. Very civil, very easy, right? Very easy to say that in a kind, loving, and respectful way. Setting your boundaries, especially with those authority figures, is not being disrespectful. In fact, if they cross your boundaries, they are disrespecting you. And you are an adult now. I know we revert to those children things all the time. I do it too. Every time I go home, I have to remind myself, Erica, you are a grounded 33-year-old. Don't act like you were in high school. You are a totally different person. I have to remind myself that. I have to say that out loud. Sometimes I have to say that a few times because I revert back to those old habits that I no longer have. They just happen when you get back in that space. Now, the last one that I wanted to talk about was your spouse the hardest one out there your partner your boyfriend girlfriend I don't care what they are whatever label you have for them this is the hard one for the majority of us and 
though you see Solomon now, you see the Solomon of 2019, you see where he has grown and he has progressed and where he is deeply involved in my business and we're growing to the point where it will be our business together. Solomon was not always this way. Don't forget that people have past that you don't know about, including me. Solomon was not always supportive of my business. Solomon asked many times, when am I going to make money? Why am I pouring all of my money back into my business? Why am I reinvesting 100% some months when there's bills to pay? Solomon was not always on board on my business. However, you have learned and understood by this time, I am one strong woman. And if you're not strong in yourself, that is your first job. Find your strength. Grow your strength. Because it does need to grow. And I set my boundaries with him. I didn't discuss business with him. I didn't tell him how good or how not good it was going. Because we have this, 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 this a roller coaster, you know. I didn't talk about it with him. That was my first thing. And so with your spouse, don't talk about it. Quite frankly, don't bring it up. You've got plenty of girlfriends to talk your business with. You've got an upline to talk about your business with. You've got a team group to talk about your business with. You need to vent and complain to somebody, pick one of them. Or pick God. God is my, my venter. I vent to God all the time. He's probably sick of hearing my venting. But I'm like, God, you're a safe place. I can vent to you. You're not going to tell anybody. You know, you're not going to judge me either. So that's who I vent to. But don't vent to your spouse. You're going to have bad customers. You're going to have bad consultants. You're going to have bad teammates. You're going to have this, that, and the other. You're going to want to just quit some days. Your spouse is not your go-to. That is rule one. Find just somebody else. Okay? Even this is a bad plan. This is a bad plan. Don't, don't, don't. Just don't. Okay? The second thing is, if all they have is negative to say, say thank you for your opinion, but I'm not willing to discuss it at this time. Your spouse is not your business partner. And if they are, um, no, unless they're on board. Okay, if it's a spouse that's not on board, they're not your business partner. They're not. They're not at that point. For the first four years of my business, Solomon was not my business partner. I love that man. But he was not on board with my business. Three and a half years. He came around in like December of 2017. That's about the time he came around. December 2017. I've been a consultant for four years at that point. You feel me? So just because your spouse is not on board doesn't mean your business sucks, doesn't mean you suck, doesn't mean your business is going to fail. No. But you need to set those boundaries firm. And anytime he would complain about my business, I would look at him kindly with love and say, thank you, but I'm not willing to discuss my business with you. Because all you have to say is negative. I was nice, I was kind, but I was firm. And that firmness comes from a place within where I know beyond all knowing that this is where I belong. Even if the road is long and hard, this is where I belong and I ain't going nowhere no matter what you say. That has to come from in you. So these how of how to cut with negative people Everything stems back to you. Have you figured that out? Everything stems back to you. If all you have is negative people in your life, it comes back to you. You are not drawing your boundaries and you are not firmly standing on them. I love you, but you are your problem. Sorry, not sorry. You are your problem. If the negative chatter continues, it's because you're allowing it to continue. Hi. You're okay. This is a new dog. Here she is. Say hi, guys. It's because you are allowing it to continue. All right? Everything starts with you. You want to cut ties with negative folk, you got to do it in you first. You can't change other people, but by God Almighty, you can change you. 
And if you will do that, you will find it so much easier to stand on those boundaries of saying no. Of saying not going to happen. In love and kindness, you don't have to be a jerk about it. But you can be firm in love and say, Mom, I love you, but that is not up for discussion. With your children and the way you raise your children, you can look at your mother-in-law and say, Susie, I love you, but my parenting is not up for discussion. See how easy that is? You can do that. You can absolutely do that, but it must come from you. So find your strength. Grow your strength. And then all of a sudden, it just becomes easy. You can do this. I have faith in you. You can absolutely do this. Have an amazing day.